guys, Joe here from Xbox Games. Check it out. This is going to be kind of a quick overview for a lot of you guys who have either purchased the kit or have purchased the STL, say, on Etsy and are kind of curious on how everything kind of goes together and, 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 you know, things along those lines. So first things first, if you guys haven't already, yeah, definitely subscribe. If you guys haven't already, get in. Make sure you guys get in on those giveaways. And first off, I think anybody who has purchased either the XFKO Blaster uh, as a complete or if you guys, again, have purchased the STLs or just the kits and are, are wanting to do something yourself. So first things first is I'm going to go over um, some of the actual individual parts as well as if you guys did 3D print them that, you know, what you need to do to clean them up or how we do it. But again, if you bought the kit already done, you don't need to really clean it up. We already do that for you. So, you know, on a lot of these, we print them vertical. So uh, you guys should be able to print everything just straight up and down. And again, this is the only piece that really is on its side when it prints. But everything else, straight up and down, you should be fine. When you're cleaning any of the um, uh, anything with the thread on there, usually I will just take a you know like a little pick right here, or whatever you guys have, and you could just pretty much go along the lines, right? And it should pop out uh, kind of the support for it and any of the gunk that is still left in there, and you just kind of clean it out. And so that is very very straightforward. Now, a lot of times also is we use one of these kind of deburring tools. You can get these on Amazon. You can get these, you know, Walmart. I mean, a lot of different places. We tend to just, you know, kind of trim it up. Just trying to get the, the extra just pieces off there from your 3D printer. Now, may you, you may never have an issue with, you know, extra hangover and things like that on your printer. But ours, we have an Ender, Ender Pro V2, which tend to have it. And then everything else is pretty much straightforward. Same thing, just kind of clean up any parts that you guys, you know, clean up any parts you have hanging off, depending on your printer. But again, we do a lot of this for you when, um, when you guys get the actual kit from us in comparison to when you print it yourself. So with the parts done, perfect. Very, very straightforward, right? Um, I want to talk a little bit about the trimming that needs to be done. So in the end, it should look something like this minus this extra piece we have here because when we do this we do it with a dremel so we don't go too close to this and we end up finishing it off with a file or something along those lines but pretty much you can go straight along if you look at it like this you can go straight along that line you want to pretty much just get rid of that whole thing and you can go straight along that whole bottom line with that back curve right there right so it's pretty straightforward and again you could finish this off the dremel however you guys want to do it and then for the grip down here pretty much we pull up one grip here. You can see on the original, it has like that groove right there. You can go right up that groove. And on this top on this top piece right here, you just go back until you meet that groove. Pretty much it. And just kind of get it flush. So it should look, again, something like that minus, again, this little piece right here, our pieces right here that we're going to finish off. So cutting this is pretty straightforward. I always say cut a little bit less uh, than you need. Um, that way, you know, you could always, you, you know, it, you, if you don't cut enough, it's perfectly fine. Because if you cut too much, then you're, uh-oh, wouldn't look too bad, but you guys, you guys get the picture. Now, now that we have the frame done and we have all the parts kind of cleaned up and ready to go, uh, we want to talk a little bit about the brass, right? So I put links down to this inside uh, the description, also in the Etsy listing. You will need both of these. You guys will need uh, the 732nds, the 0 .01, 0 .014, and of course the 916 ths uh, the 916 is the bigger one, and then, of course, the 0.14 is the one that goes inside. And depending on how long you guys want to make your barrel, I mean, by all means, you guys can almost make two kits out of this, even more, depending, again, on how big you want your barrel. Some people want the whole barrel this long, and I'm like, okay, or this long. It, it's your choice. It's going to stick out the end of this, especially if you guys want to use the smaller one. So for me, uh, I only make the barrel... Um, probably about eight inches long so that it's barely inside the tip of this. So if you switch to this, it's the same thing. It fits inside that chamfered hole down there. So the barrel ends here and it just shoots out the top. But again, completely up to you. So again, I'll put these down in the description. And again, you can make two kits out of this or even more depending on how far you want to do it. So let's get this thing ready and kind of talk about some of the stuff that we do inside here so that when you guys get this thing ready, you guys kind of know. One of the big ones is the spring. So with all the extra you know, added weight of the barrel and the brass breech, we tend to cut this a little bit. So on the spring, we count about 10 rings down, and then you could just, you could just cut it with a pair of cutters. And you take the last three, right? So I just go like this, whatever you guys got to cut it. Perfect. And then you could take the last three on there, 
and you can almost bend it by hand. So boom. So it's a little more taut, right? Since it's getting, you have a lot more mass. So that's one of the tricks that we do to kind of get that good coming, you know, solid coming back. And again, here is the plunger. Now, one of the tricks about the plunger is you don't want to rip everything out. You just want to rip everything inside the middle out, but keep that outer ring there. We noticed if you try ripping that outer ring, you tend to distort this whole back piece. So I just use a piece of, uh, or some clippers here, whatever you want to call these. Go ahead and clip those. And a lot of times you can just pull, boom, that middle piece out. We end up throwing the plastic away, keeping the spring. You can see there is still some stuff left in there, right? So try to trim it out as best you can. Sometimes you have to file a little bit. So we just try and cut a lot of this out, okay? Now, a lot of times you're gonna have to, um, let's see if I have my thing here. A lot of times you're gonna have to uh, get a little bit of a file depending on how, you know, what you're using for cutting. And you're gonna wanna kind of file down some of those uh, little burrs in there, right? I mean, you guys may have better tools than me and probably could do this way better than I can, but this is what I tend to do. So I tend to file it down just a little bit, get it out of there, right? Boom. Now, if you want to get that piece that's way down in there, you can. I tend to, I tend to just grab this and just spin it, boom, and just rip it out, right? You guys might have better pliers than myself or you might have better cutters than myself and then I just go in there kind of grab as much as I can. The more you can grab out, the better. So again, as much as you want to grab out, you can. We can take off this outer ring out here or this outer O-ring. You don't need it anymore. So perfect, just throw that away. And we're semi-ready, right? You can test this by just lining up the groove on here with the groove on the top and just try to push it in. Just see if it'll sit in there and you could tell where it gets hung up. So mine's being hung up. So I'm going to file, um, file those little grooves down just a little more, just so this will sit in there. Perfect. And then we got one more right there. Just kind of blow it out and I'll test it again. Just put it in, there we go. And you'll know if you're correct because this is gonna sit flush on the outside. You don't want it turned or anything like that. So perfect, that is in there. Now, everything else, the brass breech and everything, depending on how you guys cut it, remember the smaller one should go on the inside, right? Something like that. So eventually this will go in here uh, after you, after you kind of do it, boom, something like that. This will eventually go down the barrel. <laughs> Again, just kind of doing this quick for you guys. So it's gonna look, well, it's not wanna come out the end, but it's gonna look something like that with your trigger, just goes right where the trigger goes. And then this, of course, again, kind of screws on to the end. One thing about this too is usually when you first 3D print these, um, it, it tends to screw on a little hard. So just go a little bit, go back, go forward, go back, go forward, go back until you got a real nice screw thread on there. Now, one trick that I really wanna talk about before we end this is we tend to use a little, a little bit of uh, Teflon spray right here. So uh, on the Teflon spray is I usually put a little bit right here. You don't wanna spray it because it's a big spray. I tend to put it like in a cup and put it right here and put a little bit of it right here. Let's see if I can point to it right there. Uh, this way it's just a little more, you know, slippery when you, when you put this thing all together. But that is my guide, quick guide for a lot of you guys who got the STLs, got your own brass kits. Th those are some of the tricks that we do. Um, again, one thing that I'll mention again is on the front piece here, just make sure there's a little lip right there, and I'll pull a picture of it, that you want to trim and push up. But other than that, I mean, it's no different than a lot of the other uh, kits that we've seen. It's just a, little, a few little things that we've seen that'll help you kind of put this thing together a little easier without ripping the whole thing apart. But if you guys have any questions, let me know. Thanks again, Fox fans.